and welcome to Royals at the Ranch for Thursday, June 9th, 2022. Royals at the Ranch is the series where we discuss Python Regis behavior, temperament, and training. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary, and in this episode, our feature topic will be wellness exams. We'll have a behavior break where I remind you about stress, and then we will have our Royals in Your Homes segment. What happens when you take your snake to your veterinarian for a wellness exam or an annual physical? Nothing's wrong with your snake, but it's always a good idea to have your vet establish a relationship with your snake and get some baseline health data in case something ever is wrong in the future. That way you have normal baselines to compare things to and your vet already knows your snake and your snake is already familiar with your veterinarian. I am joined for this section by Boba Fett because he recently went to our veterinarian, Dr. Liza Pfaff at Critter Care Animal Hospital for his wellness exam. So right now let's go over what a wellness exam for your royal entails. First, as you might have already guessed, it entails a trip to your veterinarian's office unless you're lucky enough to have some mobile vet in your area that's willing to come to your house. We used to have a mobile vet in my area, but he retired and he was the only one. So now I have to physically take all of our animals to the vet, except occasionally our equine vet will come out to look at the horses. So you're gonna transport your royal to the vet and you're gonna put your snake in something safe and secure, like a snake bag, a tub, or a similar container that the snake can move around in, breathe in, and be secure in until arrival. I typically use a tub with snapping hinged handles on the side that that snap the lid down, like the one pictured here. And I like the ones that I can also seat belt in at the same time. So this one has a handle that I can put the seat belt through and it seat belts into the car. If your snake is big enough not to fit through the slats in a cat carrier or a small dog carrier, or one of the cloth dog or cat carriers, Those are convenient because they are typically designed to seat belt into your car. So now we've arrived safely at the veterinarian's office and the first thing that's gonna happen, after allowing the snake time to acclimate to the room, which may mean just setting the tub in the room and taking the lid off and letting them decide when they wanna come out on their own or something similar. Once that's done and the snake is relatively calm and relaxed, the vet's usually gonna start with a physical exam. They're just gonna take a look at the snake. They're gonna feel the snake, put eyes and hands on the snake. They're gonna check the skin, the snake's overall body condition. They're gonna get a weight on the snake. They're gonna watch the snake's behavior and how they're moving. Then normally they progress to an oral exam where they're gonna look inside the snake's mouth and what they're looking for is any unusual discharge, any unusual coloration or discoloration, excess mucus, any bubbles at the back of the throat or any bubbles coming out of the nares. After that, the vet is gonna listen to the snake's heart and lungs and that's usually done with a stethoscope but occasionally the stethoscope isn't adequate to pick up the faint heartbeat of a snake, especially if they're really tiny. And I'll show you what an alternative method of listening to the heart is in just a minute. If you were able to bring a fresh fecal sample, your vet will collect that to do a fecal check and check for any bacteria or endoparasites. And if you didn't bring one, sometimes the vet can get one by gently massaging the snake there. Sometimes they're nervous enough that they eliminate at the vet And then occasionally the vet can just do a cloacal swab and get a little bit of feces out so that a check can be run. And then there are optional or additional things that you could request done just as a precaution or if the vet notices anything unusual with your snake during the preliminary exam, he or she might suggest that you do one of these other things. And that could entail blood work, saliva or cloacal swab to send that in for cultures or for viral testing, and then perhaps x-rays or ultrasound if they felt any unusual masses or heard any unusual sounds when they were doing the initial exam. All right, so getting there and getting settled. I, I wanted to talk about this a little bit more. 
In red, I've got circled one of the crates that I use to take the snakes to the vet. It has a clear front, so the snake's able to see out, and that gives them a chance to acclimate to what's going on. It's not a surprise we suddenly take them out of a bag that they can't see out of, or we're suddenly taking the lid off of a tub they can't see out of. They're able to see what's going on the whole drive, the whole walk into the vet, and the whole time that it's sitting in the exam room until we take it out. I usually provide a hide inside of the transport container. Sometimes the snakes use it and sometimes they don't. Boba Fett used his hide. In fact, he was in his hide and I just picked it up out of his enclosure and I put it in the transport container. Now, this was a rock cave and I was a little bit nervous. I usually use a cardboard or plastic hide because you don't want the snake getting injured on any of the furnishings you use during transport if the car has to stop suddenly or accelerate suddenly or you get in an accident. And so what I did, because this was his cave hide, is I just packed some towels around it so it wouldn't move if the crate got shook around in the van. And then, of course, a companion is optional. Sometimes it's helpful to have someone with you as an assistant or a helper, especially if you're taking more than one animal to the vet at a time. But you definitely don't have to do that if you feel like you're able to manage on your own. So for Boba Fett, I just took his hide out and I set it on the exam table and I gave him a chance to acclimate and come out when he was ready. You can also just do that by taking the lid off of the travel container and letting them acclimate or come out when they're ready as well. So as I already said, I set the hide on the exam table and then that way the snake can have time to look around and sometimes they do come out on their own. My vet typically has a warm area prepared on the exam table for the reptiles that come in in case they want a hot spot during the exam. So next the vet's going to do things like a routine physical, which I've already explained what that entails. They're going to look at the eyes, inside the mouth, at the nares, the general condition of the skin, body condition, and of course the vet is going to get a weight. This picture on the bottom left is Boba Fett on a baby scale and notice that she has a grippy surface on there so the snake feels comfortable and he's not on a smooth metal surface that he feels like he can't be secure on. And then she also has this smaller scale, which has a perch on it, for any snakes that feel more comfortable coiling on that. And we went ahead and weighed Boba Fett on both scales so I could get some pictures, and also so that we could compare how each scale was reading. And he's just over 170 grams, and that was confirmed on both of the scales that we weighed him on. Boba Fett was about to shed when I took him to the vet. In fact, I thought he was gonna shed any day, and he did in fact shed when we got home that night. But if you're looking closely at these pictures, you might notice his skin is a little more le leathery than usual, and that's why. So following the visual inspection of body condition, oral mucus, respiration, behavior, and movement, then the vet is going to listen to the heart and then perform any requested or needed diagnostics. I usually have all my pythons nidovirus tested, and if I have any concern about any excessive discharge from the nares or extra mucus or saliva in the mouth. We also do coanal swab as well as a cloacal swab. So you can take a saliva sample from the coanal area inside the mouth and you can do bacterial cultures and nidovirus testing from that. And there is also a nidovirus test that you can have done from cloacal swabs. And so we usually do both. All right, this is a Doppler. And as I said before, a stethoscope is not always the best choice for listening to a snake's heart. It can be hard to hear because especially a small snake or a baby snake like Boba Fett, he's not even a year old yet, he's not even 200 grams, it can be challenging to hear that heartbeat through a traditional stethoscope. And so Dr. Pfaff used a Doppler, and a Doppler is a type of handheld ultrasound machine. It uses sound waves to check the heartbeat. And the handheld sensor device detects changes in movement, which it translates into sound. Let's take a listen at what we heard.
welcome to this behavior break. Existence is not stress-free. I want to remind you all that stress can be good, tolerable, or toxic. Ideally, as keepers, we should focus on building resilience in our snakes, promoting good stress, minimizing tolerable stress, and avoiding toxic stress. We do this by exposing the snake to enriching experiences and achievable challenges which they choose to engage in. We also do this by avoiding situations that cause the snake fear, anxiety, and or distress, and by increasing choice and control in our snake's lives. I want to remind you that good stress is exciting, challenging. It may be difficult, but it's not distressing. Tolerable stress is distressing, but it's manageable and the snake is able to cope with it. Toxic stress is distressing. It's unmanageable, the snake is unable to cope, and it may have permanent detrimental consequences. I want you to check out more detailed videos on my channel about stress and resiliency. For more information about this, I have done several. This is a good time to remind you about this body language guide. It's really important that you're familiar with your snake's body language and that you know when they are in the green zone or relaxed and comfortable, when they're in the yellow zone or experiencing moderate stress, or when they are over threshold and in the red zone, which means they are way overstimulated and in severe distress. Thank you so much for listening to this behavior break. For more about this and other topics, please visit behavioreducation.org or consider becoming a patron. You can go to patreon.com slash behavior education and see what we have to offer there. I wanna thank you guys for joining me for this episode of Royals at the Ranch. I appreciate your willingness to learn and your interest in animal training, behavior, enrichment, and welfare. Now it's time for I hope you enjoyed that. That is actually many people's favorite segment of Worlds at the Ranch, and I need some more photos and videos from you all so that as we do these last few episodes in June and July, that I have some fresh photos and videos to share. You can email me those at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com, or you can message me those on Facebook Messenger. I think those are the easiest ways for me to receive those photos and any videos. You can also email me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com if you have further questions. You can contact me through the form on my website at behavioreducation.org. Again, please consider becoming a patron if you're interested in more classes, more learning. If you're interested in doing live chats, either privately or with the group, go to patreon.com slash behavioreducation. I'm also available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course, right here on YouTube. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.